Hello everyone, I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And we're here to talk some Shonen Archive. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire soul into finishing every single Shonen Jump anime that is currently available in English and in an available form for us to get um, series until the very ends of time itself or the ends of us. And today, the, the series we usually go through, Gintama is the main one, and the two on off rotation are Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball. Today, we're going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen, and we're going to be picking up where we left off, which was episode 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. We're really close to the end of season one. Holy shit. We're so close. <laughs> we'll be able to be caught up, and we'll be almost in time for season two. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're extremely close. Damn, nice, nice. So, Zen, let's get right into it. We'll be going in. We'll be going over episode sixteen, which is oh, thank God for the easy to say titles after dealing with Gintama, <laughs> Kyoto's Sister School Goodwill Event Team Battle Part Two. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> when the episode's name isn't like. Uh, sometimes you should eat blueberries on a Sunday. <laughs> and then that's the sometimes name of... you should eat blueberries on a Sunday, but then they'll make you sick and you'll miss your date. Yeah. Gintama episode. Women um... are fickle when it comes to pickle sandwiches. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Gintama? Let's go. Episode 16. <laughs> Feel free to say it. Tell us what so, it's about. Uh, Yuji and Toto are fighting, and Toto wants to help Yuji become better at using Cursed Energy, because he says that the Divergent Fist uh, is essentially Yuji covering for a bad habit, because Yuji can't control his Cursed Energy flow. So uh, he just kind of makes up for it with the lag time. Uh, So they start working together to try to sort of uh, help Yuji learn how to do better. Um... Because Yuji doesn't realize that, like, you need to use your cursed energy through, like, from your stomach. It starts in your stomach, and then you move move it out to the rest of your body. Um, Then we cut to the other people. Um, We see Nobra fighting against Momo. Mechamaru jumps in and starts fighting against uh, Panda. And we get a big fight between Panda and Mechamaru, where Panda transforms from his Panda mode into his Gorilla mode. Uh, and they start throwing hands, and he does defeat Mechamaru uh, in guerrilla mode. And then we cut to Maki versus... Uh, why can I not remember the blue-haired girl's name? She's just that irrelevant. Uh, Kasumi? Miwa. Miwa. Her name is, yeah, oh, I guess, Kasu- I guess her name is Kasumi Miwa. But yeah, Miwa um, is fighting Maki. And because all Mai had said about Maki... Maki ever was like, oh, she sucks. She's the worst because she like is biased and hates her. Uh, Maki is actually very strong, and so she is struggling to keep up. Mm-hmm. Is that where it ends? Uh, it is where it, they they do some fighting in the beginning of it, and then episode seventeen starts off with the conclusion of their fight. Okay. And the Juju Stroll, which one was it for this one? Oh, this is the one where they keep asking Mechamaru for help with like various things because they're mm-hmm. they're like afraid to talk to the other dudes. I think of the team. Uh, all right. So this one, it has been a while since I've seen it because this was before we ended up having to take a break. I had no idea that when I saw these episodes, we would end up taking a break. <laughs> but thankfully, <laughs> I have uh, some notes here. I really like any time <laughs> dudes are just being dudes. Like him and Toto. Yeah, bros throwing out. Oh, yeah. So good, dude. There's nothing. Just dudes being dudes. What's better? And there's nothing more. Du- there's no one in the cast of Jujutsu Kaisen who is more dude than Toto. Yes. Toto is massive dude energy. Yes. 100%. Just like every single being of his. Uh, the way he stopped his fist with his forehead. <laughs> just so he could stop. It's the most like meathead good way of stopping a fist. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, I just went to go meet it, so it, therefore it didn't reach full speed, so it doesn't hurt as much. And it's like that doesn't make any sense to me. 
<laughs> but that's still a really cool ass way to stop a fist. <laughs> and yeah, they're back and forth with each other. The part where they like start like I think it's fighting, and it's like uh, the film reel in the back of I think what was memories of them <laughs> of them being together. It's really funny. Yeah, the the memories that don't exist. <laughs> yeah, the memories that don't exist, which is really good. Um, I like seeing Panda, and I really like that the um, Yaga is voiced by Kiryu, because when he's holding baby Panda, it definitely reminded me of Yakuza 6. <laughs> That's the song of life, which is a lot of him holding a baby for most of it. But I really like the battle between him and the uh, Mechamaru. Um, I like the kind of difference in dichotomy about them. I think they go more into it in the next episode. But in general, I like seeing Panda fight. Um... And Panda fights him in a really funny way, too, where he's just like a, a, <laughs> like a panda. He uses his giant panda weight to really hit him in the face. He, like, hits him with his ass at one point. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> was, he also does an aura, aura, aura moment, which is cool. Yes, that's really cool. I like a lot of the fights, and it always is really surprising to me whenever I do see criticisms of the fights about Jujutsu Kaisen, because I'm always like, fucking what? Like, when you're in the moment... It's so good, <laughs> and you're just enjoying the shit out of these two dudes fighting each other, that I don't really ever see the criticism. I'm not saying that they're invalid, because I think some of them do end up, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, I can kind of see that now that I'm out of the moment, and I'm actually just, like, watching it as it is but that way, but I'm not the kind of person who's, like, in the middle of the mood, I'm just like, oh, that background, <laughs> there's, like, there's a giant panda fucking like doing wrestling moves on a giant mech man i'm focusing on that i can focus on all the other stuff in the background later <laughs> but i think it's really good and well animated it's my long way of saying it and in the moment i think it ends up working really nice um i also like the gorilla mode here too i also like panda i don't know how you feel about panda zen but i'm a big fan of panda I like Panda. It's hard to dislike Panda. He's, he's a panda. Yeah, he's just so chill. and <laughs> He seems to be very understanding with the situation that he has in life, which is nice. He's a very good dude. Not bro status, but he's definitely a good dude. Um, Panda's the one who you ask <laughs> for help with a woman, but Toto's the one you hype, who hypes you up while you go talk to a woman. <laughs> That's the difference of levels of dude. There's very many dudes on the dude spectrum, and I think that's the where Panda fits into this one. And yeah, and I like the end bit with Maki, where after being told that he's like, oh, whatever, she's just constantly talking shit about her. I'm sure she's not nothing. It turns out like, oh, no, she's really, really fucking good <laughs> at what she does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which is a really funny, good way of just being like, oh, yeah, wh why does this character seem to think that they have a chance? It's like, oh, because all they ever heard about this person was like, oh, yeah, they're trash, they're bad, they're not as good as me. And it turned out like, that person was full of shit. What are they talking about? <laughs> This person's kicking my ass. <laughs> so great. I thought it was a good episode. Uh, how you feel, Zen? Real good. I like the episode a lot. Um, I like pretty much this whole arc. It gets kind of dunked on for being like, oh, there's nothing really important happens here, sort of. But uh, I, I really like a lot of the fights. It's just, just kind of getting to see them do cool stuff. Mm. And uh, Maki's fight in here especially is really cool. Hmm. Uh, that's a really interesting to think of the idea of like, oh yeah, nothing really happens in here, but I still feel like it's important enough to just see them, kind of like it's the payoff of the training, I guess, right? I think the bad version of this is the uh, the My Hero. <laughs> Maybe it's because I, at the same time <laughs> that this was going on, I'm very familiar of what a bad version of what they're doing here is, and it's that My Hero arc, <laughs> where it's like, uh, all these characters have been training. Let's show off what they can do. And it's like, this is so... I never realized how many fucking characters were in in this in this show until this arc hit. There's so many of them to keep track of. But yeah, I can, I can understand that criticism, but I don't really see it here. I think it's just a good arc in general. But let's move on to episode 17 and keep the good arc vibes going. With episode 17, Kyoto Sister School Goodwill Event Team Battle Part 3 gotta love those titles <laughs> go ahead <Zen. laughs> uh one second i need to do something real quick if you okay. want to grab this one or we can pause and i can grab it and just okay we, we can pause for right now we can pause yeah. she'll have her day again she'll come back to a four six we're back <laughs> episode <laughs> 17 <laughs> episode 17 we get some flashback from uh miwa who is like 
thinking back to my saying, oh, yeah, Maki sucks. Don't worry about Maki. You're, you'll be fine without, you know, Ma- Maki's no threat. Uh, only to realize, holy shit, Maki is a giant threat. <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> Similar uh, to the old Konami tagline, Dracula is still a threat. <laughs> Maki is still a threat. Maki is still a threat. Uh, Maki is kind of whooping uh, Miwa's ass a bit, kind of tossing her around. Um, she ends up using her simple domain ability, which is like an automatic counter, basically. Um but Maki ends up breaking through it by snapping her spear in half and throwing the spear tip, um, which causes the automatic counter to go off and block it. And then they kind of tussle. Maki disarms her and takes the sword. Um, then, yeah, she disarms her, takes the sword, and just kind of leaves her there and, like, knocks her out. Um, or no, it doesn't knock her out. Just leaves her there. Just takes the sword and goes. Um, because she ends up she ends up getting knocked out later. Uh, we cut over to Nobra, and she's kind of having this debate with Momo, who is the little witch girl uh, sorcerer, about what it means to be a female sorcerer in Jujutsu society. Because you know you have all these expectations on you that are you have to live with, and that's different from being a male sorcerer, where all that matters if you're a male sorcerer is that you're strong. Um. Eventually, uh, Nobara ends up getting a piece of her, like, broom, like, one of the bristles of her broom, and uses a straw doll on it, which causes the broom to fall out of the sky, and she starts beating the shit out of her with a squeaky hammer, because the regular hammer would kill her, uh, but then she is hit by a bullet at the last minute from Mai, which knocks her out, um, Maki and Mai end up confronting one another, and they fight for a bit, and Maki ends up winning in a really badass move where Mai uses her curse technique to generate a bullet when she tricks Maki into thinking that she's run out because she uses a revolver. So she takes six shots, and then she uses her cursed energy to create a seventh shot and shoots it, and Maki just palms that shit with her bare hand and catches it. Uh, and then Mai just kind of concedes, and... They have this little, this little moment where they argue, and you know Maki kind of promised her a long time ago that she would always be there for her. But eventually, the mistreatment from the the clan became too much, and so she kind of left. And so Mai resents her because she feels like she's stuck in the life that they have because of her. Mm-hmm. Man, that's a long, heavy way to end it. And then I don't remember what if there was a juju straw in this one. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't remember either. That it, it, the wiki says there, it, well, there was one, but it doesn't say what it was. So fair enough. Uh, let's get into this one. So I really liked a lot of this is centered around um, Maki for sure, and they do a great job doing the backstory for these two sisters because I think they do them both really well in a really nice way. Um, I like the, the economy of one of the sisters wanting to be like, well, we could have just lived a very kind of like normal lifestyle and not had to worry about a lot of things, but you didn't want to walk that way. You decided to actually do the opposite and fight back. And then that made it seem like I had to do the same. And it, it wasn't really fair to me because I never wanted to be that way. Um, it ends up being very sad because it's, the. Uh, as I've said beforehand, I'm a big a big believer in the brother be brother, and I'm also a big believer of the sister v sister. <laughs> I think mm-hmm. both storylines can be done extremely well, and I think they really knock it out of the park with the, the relationship that they have between the two of them, where I think it makes sense of why they're acting the way they do. And you can even see it in the way that the fight of how one feels like they don't compare to the other one. Because even with a, a technique that she's been hiding this entire time, literally they had no idea they had the ability of, and she was just able to stop it. And she's just like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, <laughs> oh, how do I top that? It's, it's not even fair. Yeah, I love the vibe of, like, where Maya's like, this is bullshit. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> how, am to, how am I supposed to fight you? Yeah, it, it really is. And it goes to show of just, like, it... I, I, because you think that the way that it's built, because one can't see 
um, spirits and the other one can. That you'd be like, okay, so that's a very easy way. She doesn't have to go into that role and we're pretty easy, but she chooses to go down that role regardless. And the one who actually can see them is now being thrusted in the same path as her. And it's very clear that she's just super good at it. And she's super good at it while also having the huge disadvantage of just not being able to see them. So you can see how that just kind of gnaws at you. The idea of just like, how is someone who is has such a big disadvantage just so much better than me and it it's just straight up frustrating <laughs> i can understand mm-hmm. why a lot of that can breed resentment and especially with the way that she also ends up walking away from her clan and one of them stays and it definitely like kind of like is like it it feels unfair it's like i feel like you should have been there with me and in this specific case you walked a path that i couldn't follow and it just we ended up drifting apart because of that and i think it's Really well done here. And the other fight that goes on here between Noboru and... I forget her name constantly. What's the name of the uh, the other girl? <laughs> the one with the the, t- the twin tail going up ha- hair? The, the classic anime uh, hair? The, the one on the broom? Yes, the one on the broom. The witch hair? The witch hair kind That's of one? That's Momo. That's Momo? I also like the fight between her and Momo, because I, th- I like I like when the bro pulls out the toy hammer to avoid killing her. It yeah, is a and he destroying her with the squeaky hammer. Yeah, how much she's just fucking terrifying. <laughs> they do a really good <laughs> job of just making her as scary as possible. <laughs> To, like comparing I her love t- how it does the the anime like several different angles of a bunch of different hits <laughs> she's beating the shit out of her with that mm-hmm. hammer yep really good really good <laughs> I like it a whole bunch and yeah I thought this episode was really well done I thought both of the fights all there are technically three fights in here and I think all of them do well the one in the beginning to show how good fucking Maki is at what she does the one with Noboru and Momo uh, well done, and then the final ending with the sister v sister is also uh, fantastic. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, really good. I really like Maki and Mai's dynamic. That it's something that actually gets criticized a lot in Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't agree with that criticism a lot. I like mm-hmm. it all. I really like uh, the the dynamic between the two. I think it's very cool. Um, good fight good fight in general and mm-hmm. it was really badass to the the way that she just kind of mopped the shit out of me was really cool <laughs> breaking her weapon in half so she can throw half of it is extremely badass yes it is it 100 percent is that's interesting to hear that it's criticized in some way that, that... a lot of people don't like it because they they say that my is not developed enough to make it emotional you, you'll hear this a lot in criticism of shitsu kaisen is that people will say oh why should I care about X, Y, and Z? Because I don't know. Like uh, Junpei. A lot of people think that Junpei is an irrelevant character because he's not, like, he doesn't deserve to be sad because he's not developed well enough to be sad, etc. Which is like, you know, I, I find him sad because I'm a human being. <laughs> so yeah, a horribly that... bullied child that becomes a, what? What? a what? fucking school shooter is like a sad thing. It is sad. That, I have empathy. I, the, the reason I didn't say anything is because I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. Yeah, <laughs> it is a... it's, it's weird. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear that a lot where like people that... and, you know, you get similar stuff. Um, Hmm. With with Mai later on, where people will be like, "Oh, why why should I feel bad for Mai when, you know, I barely even know her? Why should I care?" That kind of stuff. That's because they're human. They, yeah, that's crazy. Because especially, they're human beings. Yeah, it's, especially as we, you know, have some you know, obviously two different series, but we also have gone through a lot of Gintama, which features a lot of characters who don't make it to the end of the arc. <laughs> they yeah, don't. That's the thing is, there's so many Gintama episodes where the the whole episode is just like about one character who literally just exists only for the purpose of these three episodes and there's some amazing emotional stuff yeah it's yeah it's a you know what it's a very interesting criticism for it that i've not really heard of before and it's also criticism that i can't get behind (laughs) that's just not the way that i kind of think and consume about stuff like the idea of me being like, oh, you know what, I, if I just had 20 more episodes with this character to really care about them and feel for them, I just don't see that. <laughs> I just see a person, they establish it. Some, like, even some of the best, like, like, if you think about, like, 
Let's even actually go back even further. If you go back to, like, <laughs> Caterpie from Pokemon, one episode is enough for you to make a care about that Caterpie. That's really all yep. you need. That, that shot of him looking at the moon? That's all you need for a character. That's all... In that span of time, all the thing that the character had ever said was Caterpie, and then you saw that they had ambition that went beyond their body. That's all that you need, really. <laughs> And that's kind of the way I kind of consume a lot of stuff. So, you know, that's very interesting. We won't dwell on it any longer, but that is an interesting thing to hear of other people saying. <laughs> I avoid a lot of, like, uh, I guess that style of people talking about, like, anime and manga. So I'd never heard of that before. It's 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 wild, for sure. Uh, let's go on. Speaking of wild, let's go on to continue the good times with episode 18, which is an episode called Sage very simple <laughs> i enjoy it I'm, I'm down for it man <laughs> so episode 18 uh we see megami fighting with uh noritoshi they're kind of trading some some banter about being like the the chosen ones of these clans because you know noritoshi has the blood manipulation ability which is the unique ability for the combo clan and megami has the 10 shadows which is the unique like important ability for the zenin clan and they're kind of having these differences of belief because Kamo feels very indebted uh, to the family. And like, like he's stuck there. Like he has to be the next head because he wants to get a better life for his mother. And he doesn't really have any options. Um, Megami feels the opposite where he doesn't give a shit about the Zenny clan and he doesn't care at all. So they both kind of have those opposite worldviews of one another. Um, Inumaki is just kind of killing spirits through the woods before he notices something very powerful nearby uh miwa is knocked out by inamaki's cursed speech and before they go out um to like go pick up miwa there's a spirit that the jerk principal has released into the woods to kill yuji and Inamaki finds it, but then it is immediately killed by Hanami, which is the cursed spirit from earlier that rescued Jogo from the Gojo battle. Uh, we see Mahito and another curse user say that they're going to start their little plans here. We cut back to Kamo and Megami, where Megami reveals that he has a new shadow, which is an elephant that can shoot water. Uh, and then when he... Uh, covers Kamo in water and throws him out of the building, so he's out in the air. He summons Nue, which is the electric one that flies around and strikes him, which causes extra damage because he's covered in the water. And then as they go to continue to fight, a giant mass of branches come out, uh, and they get distracted and look over, and they realize that uh, the cursed spirit that Inamaki saw has come in to start attacking the school. And they plan to try to just hold out as long as they can until uh, Gojo can arrive before all of a sudden a curtain goes up so they can no longer reach the teachers outside to let them know what's going on. Um, and so then they decide that they need to try to get out of there because there's no way they can fight this guy alone. Hmm. And yeah, does it, do they start fighting it at this point where they're like using? No, I think it, I think it ends when it says he's gonna kill them. Okay, okay. All right then. For this episode, I remember really liking a lot of the fights between. Again, just continuing on the good fights. <laughs> I really liked uh, seeing Megami and seeing the changes that he had. I like seeing that giant elephant that he had <laughs> show up, show up with a bunch of water. Uh, I'm a real big fan of summoners in general. It's one of, maybe one of my favorite classes. And um, and if a JRPG has a summoner class, I will try my best to get to that class immediately. That's why I like Golden Sun so much. Every class is the summoner class in Golden Sun. <laughs> uh, so it was cool seeing them with the new ones and seeing them fight. Always good with that one. I like the differences between the dude that he's fighting. And I think he also realizes after... I don't remember if it's this episode or afterwards that he's holding back. And he's not fighting him at full force because he doesn't really want to kill him. Um, and again, the reason that they're fighting is because one of them wants to kill <laughs> his friend and they're not down for that. So it doesn't seem like he really wants to be in a situation where he has to kill Megumi. But 
you know, he has to do what he's being told if he wants to. At this point, what we learn, you know, protect his mom and stuff like that. Make it better. He'd be the, the leader of the clan. Uh, I like seeing... I think this is also... There's a bit here where they talk about the lost sword. And I think... Is that the sword that comes back later? Or am I thinking of another sword? Uh, The one that Megami they, has here? No, I think... It, they, they use it in a little bit, but then it's done. Okay, no, I think the, the Kasumi sword, the one that was in the water that they later on use in... No, I might be thinking of something else. It might be something completely different. Never mind. Um, I like that the, the old old dude principal's idea was like, I'm going to release this beast and that's going to be enough to stop him. And then the way that they introduce it is that it immediately fucking dies. <laughs> And that's a good way of setting up, like, no, I'm a big fan of big thing, uh, big thing is killed by bigger thing to establish the ranking of big thing. (laughs) To let you know how serious this thing is, he was pretty confident that this would be enough to kill Yuji, which I'm actually curious if it actually could have. Because I feel like, uh, the scaling of power is a little bit off, so I'm actually not sure if that thing would have been enough to kill him, just based off how he's fighting now. (laughs) What do you think? Would it have been enough? Because he seems to be okay with the dude that he... he like The fact that he doesn't immediately get murked by the dude that he's fighting makes me feel like that plan was never going to work. Probably not. I mean... Pr- probably not. It The plan kind of gets brought out in more detail um, in the next few episodes before oh. we, we actually fully break it down. but Okay, fire enough. We'll hold off on the, 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 the greater plan thing. But yeah, and then I like when um, Hanami shows up, they immediately stop fighting each other, and I forget, is it when he shows up, it's him running, right? And then he just tells them to run away? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Uh, that's a good use of that character as well, because you know for a fact he doesn't speak a whole bunch, and when he does, it's very... Um, it's a big deal. It's yeah. a big deal. So when he actually tells him to run away, you know for a fact that he's like, nah, this is serious. Fucking run. <laughs> Do not. Yeah, I mean, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah, not a, no time to dawdle on anything. Whatever the fuck reason you're fighting, stop fighting and run. <laughs> run away. <laughs> and yeah, I like the idea of them making a entire, like, um, barrier whose only function is that we really don't want Gojo in here. <laughs> uh huh. That's literally all it does. It's all it does. Literally, anyone else can be in here, but keep that fucker out of here because we know he would have immediately ruin whatever plan we have. So with whatever time we have, we're just gonna quickly do it before Gojo can go in here. So I think that's cool. Um, good, uh, decent episode. Good episode. A lot of just building up to this bigger fight here with uh, this uh, with Hanami here. Uh, but still, good stuff all around. What do you feel, Zen? Yeah, yeah, it's solid. Uh, I, I like the the threat that Hanami obviously poses at the end there, because you know we've seen one of them fight before, um, and it was fighting Gojo, you know, so mm-hmm. like it was just getting his shit wrecked. Um, but so it, it's cool to see that this time, you know, we see one of the enemies and they're actually a major threat without Gojo there to save the day. And, you know, the immediate, res- like, their their very first instinct is, okay, I'm going to pull my phone out and call Gojo right now. <laughs> um, and it doesn't work because of the curtain. So, you know, you get that suspense that they need to get the fuck out of there. And it would not be the first time that a character has died. So now you're worrying, like, oh, shit. Like, our, you know, you, you Megami's probably fine, you know, because he's, he's one of the main trio. But you're like, oh, shit, is one of these other guys going to get blasted by this dude because Gojo can't get in there? Uh, it's given. Yeah, it makes some uh, good uh, suspense for that, for sure. Because you know that the series is not afraid of killing off any character <laughs> at any point. Except for maybe one or two. Wouldn't it have been hilarious if Yuji had died again in this arc? <laughs> just one more time, just do it one more time. Oh yeah, well, you know, he just came back to life, but actually we're killing him in the exact <laughs> two arcs later. <laughs> it happens again. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to the next episode. Episode 19, Black Flash. Yeah. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 19 begins with our, our group running away um, from Hanami. So uh, they're, they're trying to get out of there. Inumaki is kind of using his technique like sparingly just to stop it from following them. 
uh, and so yeah, yeah. So there's the scene where he's like drinking this cough syrup and he's like chugging it down, and Megami's like, "Holy shit!" This like all he's doing is stopping it from moving for like a couple of seconds. Like he's not doing anything, you know. He's not like blowing it up or anything. Um, and it's crazy that he's taking this much damage from something so minor because the thing is just that strong. Um, they try to get out of there, and they send uh, Nui out to attack Hanami, and they're like, don't worry, you know, Inumaki's going to stop it. He's, it's not going to be able to hit you back, so go. But Inumaki's throat gives out, and he starts vomiting up blood. Um, and that stops him from being able to protect Nui, which gets, like, a fist through the chest from uh, from Hanami. And then there's a really cool scene where Megami looks like he's about to go in and try to do something. Um, and Inamaki like, kind of grabs him on the shoulder and, like, stops him. And he slowly has almost, like, a Wild West standoff where you see each of them, like, take a step forward and, like, square up for a minute. And then he blasts him away, and then his throat gives out at that point, and he blacks out afterward. Um, Maki appears quickly and starts fighting him. The sword is not able to cut it. It literally just blocks it with its arm, and it can't do anything. Um, Megami manages to cut a branch off of its face with a different weapon. So they're able to confirm that the branches are weaker than the main body, so that, you know, they can't do that. Maki pulls out a special grade curse tool, which is like a three-section staff called Playful Cloud. And when Hanami is hit by it, it launches him out into the forest, uh, and they run out there to keep fighting him to get him away from the injured uh, Kamo and Inamaki. He shoots these gross little... They look, kind of look like chain chops from... <laughs> Mario, these gross little dudes that latch into Megami and start eating his cursed energy, basically, so he can't um, fight anymore. And then Maki ends up getting stabbed as well, and he is about to uh, uh, about to kill her, and he's, like, talking shit. And then Megami's trying to do something to save her so that it doesn't kill her, but then Maki tells him to calm down because their turn is over. And uh, Yuji and Toto literally come falling out of the sky in the most badass entrance imaginable. Um, and they rescue Maki. Uh, Panda arrives and takes Megami and Maki away. And Toto and Yuji square up with Hanami. Toto says, I am not going to help you fight at all until you uh, get your Black Flash. Like Until you hit a Black Flash, I'm not going to fight with you. You're, I'm going to make you fight alone until you can do it. So they fight for a bit. Uh, Yuji is trying to use anger like to fuel his energy because he's just trying to think of like, oh, he only hurt my friends, yada yada. And it doesn't work. And then uh, Toto calls him over and smacks him in the face. And he's like, get your, get your shit together. Do better. <laughs> Calm down. Um, and that's when we get the iconic uh, my best friend line. And they... Uh, he goes back in and he quickly lands a black flash and as soon as he does land the black flash uh toto is like oh you did it you you know you understand how to use cursed energy now you you know you've, you've grown as a sorcerer and i'm proud of you and all this stuff and it's you know uh the cursed spirit heals itself so hanami heals up to like restores its arm that Yuji had blown up with the black flash, which by this point, like, you know, we watched those curse tools bounce off of its body, so we know that Yuji's on some real shit now, because he literally exploded that thing's arm that previously nobody could damage. Mm -hmm. And then we get the the brother fight with the two of them start fighting together. And it is Hanami and Yuji or uh, Yuji and Toto versus Hanami at this point. And then the episode ends with Toto saying, uh, it's time for me to bust out my curse technique now. So good. So <laughs> I um I do a really good job of uh, hyping up Hanami at the beginning, showing you like them, the people who are like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of bad vibes given to the idea of jobbing when it comes to anime dudes, but jobbing is not a bad job. 
in theory, the best jobbers in the world can still look good while making the other dudes still look insanely strong. And I feel like that's what they're able to do perfectly with Hanami. It's obviously the it's obvious that all the dudes that are fighting up up until um, Yuji and Toto show up don't really stand much of a chance. But they're also being looked. They also are able to still look strong and able to do some badass stuff. While also it being kind of almost completely negated right away, and it hypes them up, but I think it still keeps them looking strong um, as things go forward. I think they do a really good job. Like obviously, when he's like just to show off in the beginning, like you said, the cursed speech himself is like all he's doing is stopping it for a couple seconds, and that's almost completely wiping him out. A dude who <laughs> you would think that would not be that tough, but it's like no, nah, the difference between us is just so insanely high that it's hurting for me to even stop him for a couple seconds so that when it does when he does finally like blast him out of range for just a little bit he uses the last of his strength there it really shows like damn that must have been a big ass blast if he was able to do that and that also must have hurt like hell when he did that because you know for a fact this dude is real <laughs> you know Hanami is fucking strong so you know that um uh, that blast took a lot of out of it, and it's well done. It's well done in that aspect. Same thing goes for um, Maki when they're fighting with the cursed tools. Like these are very strong cursed tools, but they're not doing much. Um, but they're still fighting them, and they're still kind of kind of keeping up. It's just that this dude is just way too strong, and it's going to be hard to kind of deal with it. And finally, showing up for the big ass hero moment when Yuji and Toto come in, and they're just like. <laughs> The vibe almost changes when Toto walks in and he's like, nah, you're going to do some training here. I want you to hit that black flash. <laughs> and uh, the way he tells him, like, think, when he, like he sets him straight saying, don't, you know, don't rely on the anger. You're being too angry. Come on, man. You're going to have to do better than that. Um, and he calms down and he says, thank you so much, my best friend, best friend. And the look of like smile he gives him was like, hmm, yes, we are best friends, <laughs> learning so much from each other. Oh, it's so good. And yeah, the fight that he does here, the ass whooping that comes up right here, super fucking satisfying. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. so good to see. Oh, man, I didn't even keep very much notes because at the time I was just like, nah, this is just fucking good. <laughs> I ain't got no notes to say other than day. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's such a good fight. I don't really. Uh, this is the one that gets criticized a lot, and I get it. Like because some of the backgrounds look funky, um, but dude, it's it's so like just exciting the entire time that I don't know how you could. Yeah, dude, it's just so much. I can understand that criticism too because I noticed it after it. But when you're watching it in the moment, like I can't. Again, I just can't get into that mindset of the dude who's watching this in the moment going, man, that background could just look a little bit better. It's like, do you not see the crazy shit going on around it? It's the ultimate vibe of being like, um, maybe, it, you know, maybe it is a little bit too cruel. But it kind of feels like you're having a really good time in like a party situation, but your chair has like a, it makes a slight noise when you move forward and that's enough to ruin the entire experience for you. Mm -hmm. it's like no <laughs> what <laughs> nah not for me man it's all good man this is this was fucking fantastic and it had so many good moments of them together um is this the one where he says now we shall get cooking and they're both like doing the same yeah pose? it's time, time to get cooking yeah and they do that they pose up together like that pose up together so the 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 fastness in which he has made a best friend is amazing <laughs> uh-huh a couple hours ago, they were fighting like hell against each other, and now they're ready to just fucking whoop ass here. It almost kind of feels like they come out from a completely different arc <laughs> to show up to go fight them. It's kind of funny in that way. Like, all the stuff that they went through is completely different from how everyone else, what everyone else has been dealing with. It's really good. But yeah, this is a great episode. And it only gets more ass kicking as we get go on here. Like, a lot of the stuff that gets featured in the next one. Um, when he reveals his technique and stuff is just oh, so good, but we'll, we'll get to that soon. Dan, why don't you tell me what you liked about this episode? Uh, this episode's so good. Uh, I really like the, the Yuji and Toto dynamic. Uh, it, it fucks so hard. They're, they're so cool together. The, the let's get cooking image is so iconic that I have it 
uh, framed in my kitchen. <laughs> it's, it's just in a frame in my kitchen of the students saying, let's get cooking. <laughs> um, so good. Uh, I really like the whole sequence where they're in the air on the branches and they're like spinning around, dodging all the projectiles and stuff. It looks so fucking mm-hmm. thick. All the little shit that they're doing. Um, and, you know, as cool as it looks, I think the next episode's fight, like, choreography is even cooler. So Yeah, yeah. So let's get talking about the next episode immediately because that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> episode 20, <laughs> non-standard. Let's go. Go ahead, son. So uh, the episode kicks off with Toto kind of having a flashback about, like, when he met uh, his master who taught him how to fight. Uh, they continue fighting Hanami, and Toto is like, all right, I'm going to bust out my technique, Boogie Woogie. Um, and they go to rush in, and the minute they rush in, Toto's foot is grabbed by Hanami with some roots that then throws him. Um, and it looks like it's going to impale him on a bunch of spikes. And then uh, you hear a, a clapping sound, and then suddenly it's Hanami who is being stabbed by the spikes, and Toto is standing there with Yuji's fist in his face, because Yuji went to punch Hanami right as it happened. Um, Toto then explains what his technique is, um, and it's when he claps his hands, any two things that have cursed energy in them, he can like swap their places. So um, they rush in, and they start using these like new tactics with Toto's ability, where... You know, he can clap his hand, then he can switch him and Yuji's locations. He can switch, you know, Hanami and Yuji. He can do all sorts, basically whatever he wants. Um, Yuji then lands four black flashes in a row. Uh, and Toto is feeling confident that they can win. Uh, Toto pulls Yuji out of the way of uh, one of Hanami's moves, which is those cursed bud things that hit um, Megami earlier. And so he, he like, covers himself with cursed energy because he thinks he's going to defend himself from them. And then he ends up having a, like, brain, like a Jimmy Neutron brain blast where he's talking to his idol that he likes. And uh, the idol's like, hey, you shouldn't do that because remember when the others did that, it hurt them. So he ended up, like, diffusing all of his cursed energy instead, which just causes them to bounce off because they don't have any energy to latch onto. Uh, They continue fighting, and Toto remembers that Playful Cloud is nearby, because Maki had dropped it here when they were injured. So he claps his hands and switches its location with Yuji, which leaves Yuji in the riverbed. And he (laughs) hits uh, Toto with with Playful Cloud. Or Toto hits Hanami with Playful Cloud, I mean. Um, Hanami is getting, like fucking blasted and so he puts it or i guess it's she technically puts her hand down and starts absorbing the life out of the grass nearby and starts to say domain expansion and before she's able to cast the domain expansion the curtain suddenly explodes and you see gojo floating in the air above everything kind of taking like you know stock of what's going on um the old man with the guitar, who's got Ganji, is fighting the other guy that was with Mahito earlier, the guy who just wants, he says he wants to turn people into, like, furniture. Uh, they're fighting each other. They're, they're fighting each other, and also I think Udahime is there, and Nobara and Mai show up also uh, to, to help her Udahime fight the, the other accomplice who we haven't seen very much of yet, who's just, like, a dude with a sword with a hand on it. Um... The curtain breaks, and the dude immediately is like, I'm out of here. <laughs> See ya! I'm not fucking around, I'm out of here. Uh, and he takes off running. Um, Hanami is, sees Gojo up there and is like, nope! Nope! <laughs> so Gojo chooses to go after the man fighting the old man first, because he realizes that how strong Yuji has gotten that he and Toto can last without him for right now. So the the crazy guy runs at him, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to turn you into a coat rack or something. And it's just a zoomed-in close-up of Gojo's eyes, like, smirking evilly before all of a sudden all of the dude's limbs, like, explode at the same time. And it doesn't he, like, right beforehand, the old man goes, like, Gojo, no! And then he immediately... Yeah, he's like, oh, he says, leave him alive so we can interrogate him. And then, yeah, he explodes all of his limbs. Um... 
Hanami starts running away and Yuji goes to chase him and Toto says, do not do that <laughs> because you're going to get caught in the in what's about to happen. And Yuji's like, I have no idea what you mean. And Gojo launches uh, his main, like his ultimate ability, his uh, hollow purple, which goes crashing through the forest and ends up like creating this giant valley in the forest. And Toto's like, see, this is what sucks. It's because it did so much damage, I can't even tell if it's dead. <laughs> um... Mahito manages to escape with what they came for. Uh, and Hanami also escaped at the last minute when it sunk into the ground and got away. Uh, and then, so the, the bad guys sort of win. They're kind of like, we, we did it here in the end. Yeah, and it, it just kind of ends with them going like, to the point where it's like, I could have sworn that this continued on. And I don't, maybe in my mind, it was just like, I could have swore this fight continued on, but apparently there's other stuff that comes in beforehand, which is going to be the end bits of Jujutsu Kaisen. (laughs) But in my mind, it continued on when I was reading it. So I don't know if there was a change or maybe my memory is just fucking terrible. (laughs) But I could have swore that the fight continued on until the end here, but I was wrong. And then there's also uh, a Juju Stroll in this one as well. I remembered the one that was in the last one. I remember because this coat rack guy was saying, like, I'm going to make him into a coat rack. And then someone asked him, what kind of coat rack? And then he goes into details about exactly how he would (laughs) use his bones to make a wonderful coat rack. It's like, oh, I'm glad you asked. Well, let me show you exactly how I would kind (laughs) of do that then, which is good. This episode, oh, man. So fucking The, uh, the, the Juju Stroll, by the way, for this episode is really funny. Um... It's all of the students, and they're all being asked, like, hey, which do you prefer, dogs or cats? And in the background of everyone's answer, you can see Panda, like, peeking. And then he's very depressed at the end because nobody said they're a panda person. <laughs> and he's like, you... and yeah, that's where he says, everyone hates me. Yeah, and then he's like, there's only dog or cat were the only answer. <laughs> and he thought everyone hated him because he... no one said they were a panda person. Damn, I can feel that. Uh, but yeah, I man, this episode's so fucking good. When Toto's it's using so his, good. it's so good. Toto, you get to see a little bit of his backstory here when he meets um, the woman that completely makes it understand the why why he is the way that he is and why the questions he has he has he has to ask. Um, I like it when he uses his curse technique and how much it just infuriates Hanami. <laughs> Yep, because it really is an annoying ass technique to deal with. Yeah, and... well, like uh, my one of my favorite parts is when Hanami's like, "I'm starting to get the rhythm," you know, like I'm I'm starting to figure it out. They're gonna switch right now, and he turns like they're going to, and he claps his hands, and nothing happens because he can choose not to do it. He can just clap his hands normally if he wants to, and it ends with Hanami taking another giant hit. It's so good. It really is, and it's such a good technique for a dude like um, Toto to have, too, because you would never expect him to have a a move like this. Uh, You would think it's like, oh, it's got to be something crazy, beefy, powerful, but no, it's actually a super, like, um, mental trick kind of technique, actually, the way that he uses it. And this episode actually goes a lot of the way to say he may act sometimes like a dumbass, but he's actually extremely smart. He's just smart in the dumbest way possible. Like, Doesn't he he call his brain a supercomputer in this episode? He does. That's when you realize when when he gets hit by those little, like, piranha plant things. Yeah, when he has the vision of, uh, of the idol. Telling yeah. him not to do it. Yeah. And, th- and there's like a little like uh, a side thing. This all happened in 0.01 seconds. So in that <laughs> fraction of a time, he had this entire brain blast moment. <laughs> yeah, he had the Jimmy Neutron brain blast. And he was able to figure it out. And then he just fucking goes and kicks on me in the back. <laughs> it really is just like Hanami gets the shit kicked out of him for a good 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, and when it's not Hanami... It's uh, the coat rack guy who gets fucking obliterated, who turns into a Gary's mod <laughs> when Gojo is like, ah, I finally am here now. Let's yeah. just take care of this real quick. <laughs> coat rack man. I think he's still alive. He'll answer questions. And this is maybe the, one of my favorite moments when Hanami says, I'm not arrogant enough to face Gojo. <laughs> and I said, I didn't come here to get low dipped by Gojo. <laughs> <laughs> 
so accurate. They just don't. They don't want the smoke. It's really <laughs> what it is. Yeah. The the curtain goes away, and they're all like, "Nope." No, no. Uh-uh. Except the coat rack guy. The coat rack guy wanted the smoke, which was a bad decision. It was. But everyone else was like, "No, nah, I don't. I'm not. I'm thinking I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. Goodbye. Everyone's gonna go. It almost <laughs> feels like they didn't tell him how bad Gojo was. <laughs> it's like, listen, someone needs to die on this. We're gonna give it to yeah, the coat rack. Yeah, we need rack. a fall guy. <laughs> coat rack is going taking one for the team. Oh man. Yeah, just everything about this wonderful ass whooping and hollow technique purple. The that Gojo does is just so insane when he does it and he just shoots it off and it feels like how the fuck does anyone beat this guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> feels He's so badass. He is. What he are these? Says, and then, of course, Toto's reaction of like, God damn it, now we can't even tell if he's dead. <laughs> this is <laughs> such overkill that I don't know if it actually worked. <laughs> but it, it didn't end up working, and the economy will be back. But really good, really good ass beating, really good episode. Fun, too. A lot of good stuff, and a lot of fun stuff to go with it as well, and I really do like the teamwork that he's got going on. I also like when he's using his cursed technique. There's a bit there where when Hanami's freaking out, it's just a bunch of different... Like, the faces he makes when he does the clap, and one of them is just him doing, like, the with his, his nose up, like, going, like, oh, like, yeah, he's smelling like- something. Really- <laughs> it's so good. It's... Oh. He's. <laughs> I love Toto so much. It was a great ass episode. What do you think, Zen? It's so good. Yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes of season one. Uh, it's the top two episodes of season one, in my opinion. Uh, so fucking good the whole time. Toto's great. It's hard not to like Toto. Mm. <laughs> fucking amazing. Uh, and he's another character that he's kind of like Gojo, whereas that in universe everyone hates him, but all the fans are like, "Fuck yeah, this guy rules." <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's just <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. I don't know how you could not like him. He's great. One hundred percent. He asked you what do you like in a woman, and when someone asks like someone with a great personality, he goes, "What a bunch of bullshit." <laughs> 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 Let me tell you about women with a huge ass. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> and then the dude he gets a brother with is a dude who goes like, I don't know, someone kind of like. Uh, fuck, what is the name of that actress? <laughs> what is the name of the Mystique actress? Uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah, the guy's like, I don't know, someone like Jennifer Lawrence, and he's like, this guy fucks. I can, yeah, I can, this guy fucks so hard. <laughs> I can go with him. Maybe one day I'll take him to my favorite idol, <laughs> and we can have a good old time. Like, he's just so likable. <laughs> There's everything about it. He's like, he has like all the building of a D&D character, but he's made for a real series. Like, this is a character someone plays on D&D where they're just like, okay, so I made this guy, he claps, he does this, he's really into big butts, but also he's extremely strong. And it's just hard not to like him. Like, the, the people who dislike him are only ones in this universe who are just, like, annoyed with having to live with him. And yeah, just, oh fucking great so good on so many levels <laughs> i love them and yeah this is definitely one of the of the jujutsu kaisen episodes that we watch i think this might actually be one of my favorites so far we'll see with the last one but i just love toto so much and seeing all this stuff and seeing how well it was animated and then also getting to see gojo extra stuff here at the end it's like it feels like a cherry on top <laughs> All oh, dude, good. the Gojo stuff is so good at the end. Oh, it's so oh, good. It is. It really is. Uh, he's terrifying. He's a ter- I would never want to fight. I don't understand why anyone fights him. It, it feels like you'd have to be either insane or as OP as him to even stand a chance. But yeah, yeah. real good. Mm-hmm. Real good stuff here. And that is episode 20 so man let's go let's see what um episodes that we have left i think it's literally just 21 22 um uh 21 22 23 and 24 i believe really it's uh, that little level oh, man I, I think season one is only tw- it's 24 or 26 i'm pretty sure 24, it's 24. so 24 so the next time we talk about Jujutsu Kaisen, we will watch episode 21, 22, 23, 24, and then 
the movie comes next. Then the movie is gets its own episode of stuff of us to talk yes. about. And then we'll JJK be all zero. We'll be all cut up and be ready to talk about um Jujutsu Kaisen as it's releasing with the new season. And we haven't actually talked about how we want to handle that. Do we want to do it like Chainsaw Man, where it's every two episodes? We're obviously both going to be watching the episodes as it go on, but it depends on how you want to handle it. I haven't actually asked. You're someone who really cares about Jujutsu Kaisen, so I feel like I would be down for doing it as it comes out weekly. But it yeah, kinda I depends. think we can just do it weekly. All right, That's then. fine. All right, we'll do it. The, you heard it here for, first, folks. We talked it out just now. <laughs> We'll do it then. <laughs> Strategy. Yeah. Strategy session. Exactly. We keep it we're very honest and open with everyone <laughs> with everything that we do. We don't have any ulterior motives because if we did, we would discuss it on air. <laughs> but anyway, that's the plan for Jujutsu Kaisen. Looking forward to it. And that is it for this week for Jujutsu Kaisen. Thank you very much for watching everyone. As always, if you want to hear Zen talk about current up to date Jujutsu Kaisen, then may I suggest you Shonen and Chill, where there's plenty to talk about with current goings on with Jujutsu Kaisen. Very interesting times that we live in. Very interesting. And you can decide uh, how interesting when you go to see the show yourself. Go do it. And if you want some more me stuff, unfortunately I don't have any Jujutsu Kaisen stuff besides this one so <laughs> if you're coming to me then you're coming for me that's basically it <laughs> but don't worry i got some <laughs> i got good stuff <laughs> you can find other things to worth watching don't worry and that is it for this week of uh shonen archive we did it then we not only were we able to do this for th- two weeks and three weeks in a row we were also were able to do two series we're back babe. we've never been so fucking back than we are right now <laughs> We're so back. Unbelievable. We're so back. So back. So un- <laughs> so insanely back. And we will see you guys next week when we do it again. Uh, hopefully we don't... <laughs> the multiple episodes of Gintama don't fuck up our schedule for next week. But hey, we'll yeah, see you guys. It's going to be a big, a big yeah, Gintama episode. It is going to be huge. We'll get ready for a big giga episode of Jump for, for Shonen Archive next week but until next time everyone we'll see you guys in the next video say goodbye zen goodbye everybody peace out